Well, hello there. Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to put some A-pillar lights on the 2500. Help me navigate those drive throughs I know most of you are used to seeing me work on junk, but on this channel, we work on a little bit of everything or nearly anything. Um, we work on a lot of stuff. Brutus here is the alpha dog of the fleet, and so without him, I don't get a lot of work done. So we have to take care of him once in a while, too. If you're not a subscriber, now would be a good time to do that. You just click that little button down below. You know, subscribing, liking, and commenting is a good way to help support the channel and help us grow. Anyway, let's see what we can get done here. These are from a company called SDHQ Motorsports. They're in Arizona, and these are the brackets uh, 2019 to current 1500 and 2020 to current 2500, 3500 uh, A-pillar light mounts. Comes with a bracket and a bunch of hardware. They didn't include the Bosch round book, but if you want that, you gotta scan this thing and download it. They did send some cool stickers, though. Who doesn't like stickers? And uh, I guess this, I don't know what this is. A coaster, maybe? So they're, you know, packaged in this form of foam stuff. All right, so I downloaded the instructions, and we'll just go through these step by step. There's your packing list, and then, uh, let's see, installation instructions. There's a nice picture there. Okay, parts, hardware, tools we need. Lays it all out. Pretty nice. This is uh, this is pretty nice. Okay, step numero uno: unbox and verify everything's accounted for. Check. Well, step two is they want us to prop the hood up, and this is really all I got to do. That I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but oh yeah, that should be fine. I hope. Now they want us to take out these foam things here which they're connected right here this is how they're on there with one of those plastic buttons it, you know you'd be best off to have a trim tool to get those off but i don't have one on me so we're just gonna use this flat head and try to pop it out that way they did also say to remove the antenna so i guess i'll take care of that all right, we have to pop off this plastic cow piece, and there's some clips in here. There we go. There. There. It's just four little clips. Right underneath of that on the passenger side is the antenna thing. He's got two 10 millimeters. They want us to take those out. All right, we got two bolts in here. We need to remove this T30 right here. That one needs to come out. And then down inside of here, I don't know how well you can see it, but this bolt right here on the hood hinge needs to come out also. And that's a 13 millimeter. This should be a grand old time. I'm sure everything will go off without a hitch. All right, we'll start off with this Torx. Pretty close to the windshield. Don't want to slip. That would be, you know, catastrophic. That seems to be coming out pretty easy, though. Oh, that's why they tell you to use tape. Ignore their advice at your own peril. Come on, little fella. You can do it. You can do it. Okay, got it. I'll just put that there with the rest of the hardware. Now we got to try and get that bolt there. It's better done with a ratchet, I think. Okay, let's try this. You know, they said put a hood prop on here. That, that makes me a little nervous, I'll be honest with you. I don't know what's going to happen here if we take this bolt out. Is the hood going to come crashing down on me? Oof. This is, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, this is a little nerve-wracking. I feel like the hood is moving when it really probably isn't. I'm going to hold on to this puppy just in case. I don't know what's going to happen here. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I can get it out of my hand the rest of the way. Nope. 
feels like it's ready to come out now. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. No wind, and we should be okay. Okay. What we need at this point is the bracket, one of these M8s with a washer on it, and one of these aluminum spacers. So we're going to lower this down in here. And I, I know you can't see it very well, but I'll try to get close-ups when I'm done here. But anyway, this gets lowered down in here. Oh. I grabbed the wrong bracket. Let's try it again. This is this is how it goes in. You know, they did they, they stamped the little ones. I didn't stamp the big ones. Some of us aren't very smart, you know. Okay, let's get this. I got in here. I'll try to get this lowered down. And we're kind of aligning. There's one of the that that Torx bolt we took out goes through one of those. Okay, so now we got to get our spacer between the bracket and the hinge and then put this bolt through it. This ought to be a good time. I'm sure I won't drop anything. Let's see which one did they... Oh, it's only the one hole. Okay. I'm just going to slide this in here. Put the bolt through and then slide the spacer up on it and hope that I can hold it and it doesn't you know okay I think I've got it I think I've got it in there where it it's going where we took that bolt out so if I can just get that started I say if I could get that started now oh, there we go I'm not tightening it up but I'm going to run it as far in as I can with my fingers all right, now for the back, they give you a replacement hardware for that, too. It's a little bit longer. So it's going to go through this rear hole here. It is difficult to see, but it's going to go right there. Okay, I think I finally got it. little Allen wrench seems like the best, best option here. your adjustment so the the hole at the bottom of the bracket where the bolt goes through into the hinge is elongated and that's where you get your adjustment and you just want to try to get that as level as you can I should have thought of this an hour ago we don't want to over tighten this we just want to get it good and snug now we can put our 10 millimeter antenna bolts back in And we'll tighten up our hood hinge bolt here. Okay. So this is what it looks like when you get it all wrapped up. That, that spacer goes between the bracket and the hinge where you took that bolt out. Just make sure you get a washer on here. And then that new torque screw goes right here in the rear slot and then you put your antenna bracket back on. Now here we can stick our foam back in and figure out how it goes in here. Oh, it goes, I guess just like this. Oh, I see. Okay, push the button. There we go. Now you do have to trim this plastic cow piece up, you know, a little to make room for the bracket. And what they say is put it up here the way you're going to put it up here and then mark you know end to end give yourself an eighth of an inch and then take a quarter inch of material out of it so I'll see if I can get this trimmed up and we'll uh, we'll put it back so I'm just going to mark it with my razor knife here just a little teeny it's real soft stuff so you don't have to you know go crazy Okay, where I marked it, I'm just going to cut in about a quarter of an inch, which if you look on the underside, is kind of right along this, this line here. So I'm going to kind of cut in on both ends 
a little bit and then I'm just gonna very carefully take out as little as possible a little bit more here I'm going to go to what I think they say you do a quarter of an inch which I assume that's because that plate is a quarter of an inch thick but if I can get away with less I'm going to do it and I want my cut to be as neat and straight as possible just so it don't look like complete hackery you know okay let me test fit this and see if I'm happy with it oh yeah did I get enough nope so I need to take just a little bit more out on that end so it'll clip into place okay let's try it again let's see what we get this time not quite there yet again they give you the measurement the quarter inch to trim out but I just as soon take my time and just take a little bit out of the time to make sure I get the tightest fit we got to go a little bit more <sighs> you gotta be kidding me not there yet holy shit isn't it <clears throat> Do I have it this time? Yes. No. Son of a... For sure this has got it, right? Let's see. Yes. Oh, nope. No. Dang it. How about now? How about now? Yes. That general quarter inch thing, no bueno. The problem is there's curvature here, so you can't just, I mean, I suppose if you quarter inch and curve, you could do that. Again, I wanted it kind of tight, so I took the time to sliver it 4,000 times. All right, this is what you get when you, you get it all done. I mean, that looks pretty good. That's on there really solid. Now we just need to go and do it over there put my antenna back on so I can dial in my Travis trip. <laughs> these brackets here in this hardware is if you have the 1500 you need these extra thingies. Luckily I don't have a 1500 so I guess I can just keep this in the shop and I don't know use it on a Pontiac. All right I guess I'll take my cargo thingy out of here and I'm gonna give this a you know a closed test in case something went wacky and I wasn't looking, I'm just going to gently pull this down. Hopefully I don't hear any crunching. It seems unfazed. Huh. Well, I really like those. They're, uh, well made they went on pretty easy they're very sturdy and it didn't interfere with the hood or the paint or anything else so pretty happy with that i guess my only criticism would be how pricey they are but um, i guess you're paying for engineering i don't know anyway on to some lights so i got these uh rigid radiance three inch light pods they have uh, a backlighting to them and you can get that in different colors, you know, white, blue, red, green, amber, you know, whatever. I just uh, wanted to go with amber because, you know, everything else up front is amber. Well, we'll see about getting these in here. I've already kind of checked this out. And uh, I guess the thing that I don't particularly care for with these is that you have to buy the wiring harness separate. And um, for as much as these lights were, you would think they could just throw in a little copper, right? But they did give us stickers, so there's that. Brackets and hardware here. I would have much preferred if these were black. I'm going to have to paint them at some point. But we'll go ahead and get them mounted for now. What in the devil? I mean, really? Seems like a nice unit. So it looks like these go in here and they go on the inside. Oh, there's a little place. There's a little place down in there where we have to drop the nut. So we'll drop a nut and then we, there we go. Okay. 
This takes an Allen key. I don't want to get them super tight right now because we're going to have to adjust them on the truck here. Well, I had way too much caffeine today. Let's go get these on the brackets. Okay. We want them here or here. Farther out. Well, that's kind of crazy. Or here. Yeah, I kind of like that better. And then we've got these a flat washer here. I need a third hand. Oh, for Pete's sake. Lock washer. If I can get it under there. And then our nut. We'll have to adjust all of this when we go to get them aimed. But for now, I think that's all right. It gives me an idea. Let's see if I can get the wire out of there. Oh, yeah, there it goes. I got you. On the passenger side here, I'm just running it down through the antenna hole. On the driver's side, I don't know. I'll have to figure something out. So you don't have to use their special wiring harness. Uh, it's three wires. It should be pretty simple. I'm pretty sure what uh, the red is going to be power to the white light. The white is power to the back light, I think. And then, of course, black is ground. And we'll figure, you know, those two which, which is which as, as we go along here. But the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and run, you know, across to the other side. Look, I'm even going to match the colors up like a real professional. Now, what you do not want to do here, okay, is hook these three wires up just with butt connectors. And you want to put a plug on here so you can disconnect it in case you ever want to remove the light or whatever the case might be. That is the absolute correct and smart thing to do. So, of course, what I'm going to do is just wire them up with these butt connectors here. I have these heat shrink butt connectors to make sure they're weatherproof. So, I'm going to just uh, shrink them up with this lighter here and burn the insulation on the wire outside of it, thereby rendering it completely and utterly useless. So, you can see I ran this wire down through this hole where the antenna was. And then under here, I brought it on the inside of the hinge. Okay just to make sure the hinge doesn't interfere with it. And I'm hoping it doesn't. We'll test that. But I've got it secured here to the, whatever the heck you call this thing, with a zip tie, and then coming through tucked underneath the foam, and we'll run it across this way. Yeah, that'll be good. I know how long they have to be now to get across the, the hood. Um, what in the devil? Get off of there. So now what I'm going to do is just run some tape every few inches, keep them together. I mean, I could do the fancy braiding thing, but man, I was never good at that. I got all my connections together and I got my little pieces of tape running down. We just stretch this across the hood, but actually I'm, I'm going to wrap these up with some tape too first. Well, I'm using this tape like it doesn't cost anything, huh? Okay, we'll get this one on same way we did the other side. Well, I don't have a hole on this side for the... <clears throat> antenna so I think I'm gonna make one I just drilled me a hole you know where they we had to cut out for the bracket I just drilled me a hole in there and I should be able to just pull this through oh yeah I need to make sure that this hinge does not interfere with that wire in any way I would prefer if it went behind that bracket okay yeah that makes me feel a whole lot better. So what I'm doing on this side is uh, the wires coming from the passenger side light, I'm stringing them across and I'm just connecting them up with these buck connectors to the wires on the driver's side. Yeah, I'm going this route instead of buying that harness. It's $70 harness, basically on principle. That's right, I'm sticking it to the man. All right, now, as if the way I was wiring this wasn't controversial enough, I'm getting ready to blow your mind here. A little while back, we did an episode where I put Raptor style grill lights in the truck here. And that video you can see is up here or over there. I don't know. Uh, but what we're going to do with the amber, okay, is tie into that. That way the amber comes on just like the grill lights do with the parking lights, running lights. And so what I'm going to do is just splice into that right here. 
I am forever misplacing my tools. I don't know how I ever get anything done. These little fuse tap things are awesome. So you just pull the fuse, you know, like if you want to tap in, I'm going to tap into my park lamps and I add a circuit. So I pull the fuse for the park lamps. I plug this into where the park lamp fuse went. And then this gets two fuses, one for the new circuit plus one for the park lamp. So it, it kind of keeps them separate. Real simple, easy, cheap way to uh, tap into your fuse box. So tapping in the amber backlight to the park lights where I already had a fuse tap. Yeah, that's kind of a no-brainer. So now you're wondering what I'm doing with the white lights. And this is where the comment section I would expect to blow up. But I'm going to tap into the high beams. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I hardly ever use my high beams. And when I do use my high beams, it's because I need lots of light. You know, I don't use my high beams on the highway. I don't aim them at people. I, I use them when I want to flood like a back road or if I'm in the woods working or whatever, and that's exactly when I would want these. So I'm just gonna tap them into the high beam circuit rather than running through the firewall and adding a switch and cutting a hole in the dash and just all that crazy mess. This is easy. So if I turn on my park lamps, I should have the yellow backlight. Yes, okay. Now if I turn on my headlights, nothing, right? Well, nothing. Okay, good. But now I'm going to hit the high beams. Oh yeah, perfect. Well, now that it functions the way I want, I'm going to tidy up all this wiring and, you know, fix it up so it doesn't catch fire, short, ground, burn up, whatever the case might be. Now we're going to run this split loom stuff across here. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Come on, you can get across there. Okay. Well, now I'm just going to take and put little holes in these fins. And I can run a zip tie through here. Do one over here too. Well, that's going to wrap us up for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a channel member. It comes with some pretty neat perks, as I understand it. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell because we've got some pretty exciting projects coming up. Until then, get off the couch and go wrench on something. Now it's time for me to hit that drive-thru.